Hello, my name's Lydia Smith and we're standing here at the National Institute of Agricultural Botany in Cambridge. A lot of the work that we do here is about understanding crops and crop varieties and uh, making resources available to farmers so that they can grow crops better. What I wanted to show you today particularly is some work that we're doing on sanfoin. Now probably most of you have never seen this nor heard of it. So it's a legume, so it's a bit like clover and uh, this is it. It's got rather a beautiful flower and the sort of foliage that you sometimes will associate with those clover type flowers. And it's used for feeding animals it's the same way that clover is in fact. The reason that you probably haven't heard of it is that it started to disappear out of farmland from about 60 years ago and the reason for that is that uh, the amount of biomass, the, the total amount of foliage that you get from it, isn't as good as you get from the crops like clover and, and comparable ones. So farmers started to take that on as, a, as an alternative and they, and they respond better to um, inorganic nutrients, you know, the N, P and the K that makes it grow better. But what we'd sort of forgotten, or perhaps we never knew in detail, was that there's a lot of other things about this crop that make it very favourable to use for lots and lots of different reasons. So to kind of list them quickly, if you feed this crop to your animals, unlike clover, they can just keep on eating it as long as they want and it doesn't have any deleterious effects on their digestion. However, if you feed them clover, they get this rather worrying problem that's called bloat, which literally bloats up their stomach and it's to do with the way that uh, the microbes in their stomach um, interact with the foliage. So you don't get that with uh, sanfoin. Much more importantly, I think, what you also get is you get a biomedical effect from this uh, plant. So when, they, when the animal eats it, it is actually helping to purge the animal of parasitic worms that will naturally live in the stomachs of the animal. And that's not good for it. It makes it ill. It makes it less able to digest its food. And uh, in the case of young animals, it can even be life-threatening. Two things now, it doesn't cause bloat. It has this uh, so-called anthelmintic effect. It gets rid of worms. The list goes on. It has this ability to enable a better use of the protein. I won't go into the science, but basically the protein's not broken down in the animal's rumen, it's used and goes to make more animal, which is obviously a good thing. It also has good quality omega-3 fatty acids in it and it helps the animal to, to feel better and to impact on its metabolism and on the shininess of its coat so you can see it in the animal. So that's sometimes what the farmers say. They say, wow, you know, I put this uh, out for my, for my cattle and immediately their coat seemed glossier and they seemed happier, which is a nice thing to see uh, as a farmer. We've been working on this crop for about nearly 10 years now and we've been working with Cotswold Seeds who are one of the only companies that supply the seed to farmers and it is wonderful to talk with farmers and to hear them enthusing and the rediscovery of this as a crop and how it could potentially help them. Here we can see the seeds and this is one of the other things I love about this crop. The seeds in my view are really quite beautiful. You can see what you have here is a quite a complex structure uh, that's actually a sort of seed coat and then the the seed which is smooth and round a bit like a lupin seed is inside that here you see the flower you can probably see the similarity to lupin which is another of these leguminous species you can see the flowers formed right down the spike so they start it starts to flower at the bottom here and then the development works up the stem and then finishes at the top this is called an indeterminate species and that's quite exciting too because it means that as a resource for pollinators for our bees that we are really worried now about um, the, the numbers and the crash in the population this is providing a wonderful resource for pollinators and it keeps going for quite a long time because that development which is sequential means that this is flowering for quite a long time. There are a lot of problems with this. It doesn't respond that well to chemical additions and establishment is a problem. So if you're a farmer and you've got limited time uh, and limited resources, if you have a crop like this that doesn't establish well uh, and won't necessarily give you a harvestable product in the first year, it's 
might go a little bit down the list of your top favourite crops. So we've taken this on as a project to, to look at what we can do in order to resolve these sort of difficulties. So what you see here is a sort of standard plot arrangement and we're trying all sorts of different methods to improve the crop. One of them is to look at the use of companion species in that establishment phase. So what you see here is pretty much the sandfoin growing on its own. And I should say, by the way, it's September now, so uh, this is regrowth from a cut earlier in the summer. Had we been filming in July, we would have had a tall crop standing up to about here, fully, fully in flower, covered in these beautiful pinky purple flowers. On the right here, we have the crop mixed in with chicory. Potentially, we thought this was an interesting companion crop to enable that whole establishment to work better, to get rid of the problems associated with weeds coming in and to get over that problem that's, that farmers suffer in that first year. What we're also doing in the lab is finding out exactly what's going on in the genetics of the species. We have sequenced entire varieties and because it was abandoned as a crop by both plant breeders and by farmers, very little time and effort was put into that whole breeding exercise. So we have really been bringing modern molecular breeding methods to play on this. Very exciting work and more to come.